Parliament is back and this first sitting fortnight is shaping up to be a dramatic one. The federal government is trying to shift the narrative again. Only a political miracle will divert attention away from Scott Morrison's character. After a summer of discontent, the federal government's focus is turning to Parliament today with a bill to protect religious freedoms top priority on what is the first sitting day of the year. If the Parliament comes back and there's just precious few months and a very few sitting days until an election, so why on earth is Scott Morrison and the Coalition determined to talk about religion? Well, Brett, a couple of things here. This was an unfulfilled election promise from 2019. Uh, he wanted to fill a, a very empty legislative agenda, but he also wanted to squeeze Labor. The problem was that this was a very high-risk strategy because this was a subject that had tempers fraying on both sides of politics. At the 2019 election, Labor found in its own review that it lost some ground amongst devout Christians and first-term migrants. So that's why Labor this time was sort of leaning towards uh, you know, supporting the legislation, but certainly Scott Morrison tried to exploit that and failed. It was a late one, an early one. What happens now? Carl, look, the MPs have just gone to bed after a long and eventful night. I can honestly say that this has been one of the most difficult weeks of my time in Parliament. We've been to too many funerals. Let's get this done, but let's do it properly. The Prime Minister suffered a series of parliamentary defeats that culminated in his government indefinitely shelving its religious freedom legislation. The Prime Minister tried to wedge Labor and ended up wedging himself. Debate over religious discrimination ends in an unholy mess. President, I move that the Senate do now adjourn. The Senate stands adjourned. Prime Minister, he was addressing colleagues and he was pleading for unity. The only way we can win this election is if we stay united, but that wasn't to be. Five moderate Liberal MPs crossed the floor to vote against the government. Um, that is the kind of rebellion that we haven't seen in this parliament. In fact, I don't think we've seen it in several past parliaments. It's been a very long time. And it was the moderates once again raising their voice to say that they were comfortable with enshrining religious freedoms but they refused to vote for this bill unless it also extended protections to both gay and transgender children. They understood that there was an agreement with the Prime Minister to do just that but when they saw the draft bill it was only extending protections to gay students immediately and they could not in good conscience vote for it. Dreadful week for the Prime Minister, his worst undoubtedly of his entire time as Prime Minister, left his authority in tatters and a party room that was quite furious with what had gone on in front of them. Former Liberal staffer Brittany Higgins prepares to address the National Press Club alongside former Australian of the Year Grace Tate. Two highly anticipated speeches starting at about half an hour's time. In a powerful address to the National Press Club, the campaigners demanded action instead of more words. I didn't want his sympathy as a father. I wanted him to use his power as Prime Minister. Well, Parliament began this year just as it finished the last, and that is with uh, an intense focus on the treatment of women. Uh, we saw a pretty historic moment where the presiding officers and the nation's leaders stood up in Parliament to offer an apology and an acknowledgement of the staffers who had been bullied, sexually harassed, and even worse, sexually assaulted in federal Parliament. Sexual assault or sexual harassment is unacceptable, unacceptable and, and wrong. wrong. We, we say, say sorry. sorry. I am sorry. The press club address means again the coalition Scott Morrison is having to deal with topics they don't want to be talking about, goes to the heart of his personal integrity. Lay it on top of that, these leaked text messages start coming out, accusing him of being a hypocrite and a liar, one that Barnaby Joyce even admitted to having sent, really going after Scott Morrison. So what we saw was an age-old tactic, drag in 60 minutes, use his wife Jenny Morrison as the patsy. She took the blame for the Hawaii trip. She was the one who also had a clip back at uh, Grace Tame, said that she was perhaps lacking manners. Now, what's happening there? She's talking to all the people out, out in Voterland who might perhaps agree that Grace Tame was a bit rude. There have been incredible scenes in 
in the nation's capital today. As tens of thousands of protesters rallied against COVID vaccine mandates. In the culmination of weeks of demonstrations in the capital. There's a certain amount of irony in that uh, anti-vaccine mandate people come to the ACT, one of the most vaccinated jurisdictions in the world, uh, really wanting to put pressure on the government over these mandates. They seemed like they had a, a long list of grievances, but it wasn't really clear uh, what exactly they wanted, but they were here in mass. Yeah, and they were certainly creating a sense of chaos around Canberra, around Parliament House itself inside uh, honestly the protest just didn't really gain much traction it was a bit of a sideshow and i think scott morrison was dealing with his immediate political problems he'd had a shocking week with the religious discrimination bill and so he flicked the switch to what he sees as more comfortable ground national security he saved his pre-selection oh, we don't no. like no. no. inexperienced oh, order. leader order. of the Labour order. Party. The Chinese Communist Party, the Chinese government. They have picked this bloke as their candidate, Mr Speaker. Speaker. The Prime Minister has gone on the attack in a brutal assault in Parliament today. The Prime Minister... We've got another Manchurian candidate. I didn't hear it. Of order. of order, Mr Speaker, and it's on the dignity of the House, which this Prime Minister is undermining. The current and former spy chiefs warn this is a dangerous election. Game. But I'm very clear with everyone that I need to be that um, that's not helpful for us. So if you're looking for a Manchurian candidate, he sits over there. And I guess to underscore how dangerous this kind of attack is to weaponise uh, intelligence briefings and national security as we're heading towards an election, the domestic spy chief, Mike Burgess, warned politicians in no uncertain terms to keep confidential intelligence briefings confidential. The coalition was shameless and brazen in the attack. But there's a lot of Scott Morrison wanting to replicate 2019. So he's going to call an election about the same time. That last election, he went solely after Bill Shorten. We're starting to see that again with how he's going after Anthony Albanese. This was a moment of real overreach. This is the moment where he jumped the shark, uh, accusing Richard Miles of being a Manchurian candidate, effectively the agent of Beijing, was ridiculous. And it looked desperate. But what it did do, was it suddenly told Labor that this man means business. Would you like to have a go? I'm getting some tick. I've done well in a couple of times. <laughs> have you been on the tools before? I've done this before. Have you said here? Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh. Oh. politics is here in the Northern Territory. We're getting a taste of what the campaign could be like. Yeah, we are, and it's not what it normally looks like, I don't think. I don't think we saw this time the Prime Minister or the Opposition Leader do a lot of the street walks and, uh, you know, that, that kind of spur of the moment things that you normally see happen. We didn't see a lot of that. A lot of it was quite controlled. Yeah, wasn't it? It was interesting to sort of compare the two media strategies. We had uh, Anthony Albanese visiting, uh, making health announcements. He wasn't really walking the streets and doing stunts in the same way that the Prime Minister was. Prime Minister, on the other hand, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was quite a different story, wasn't it? I think, you know, his critics really seize on that stuff as you know he's there for the photo op it's really like an election stunt and it appears that Anthony Albanese is really trying to make a point of avoiding those kind of moments but you've got to question whether that how that will go for him because I think whether you like those moments or not they do grab a lot of attention and something Anthony Albanese probably needs to do is gain some recognition. There's a bit of a sort of a gamble here a sort of strategic play isn't there with Anthony Albanese thinking that this election really is his to lose. He wants the Prime Minister to be making the mistake. He was pretty quick to get on a plane to Darwin and do a defence announcement. So once again, we've got him at a you know a naval base walking around on a the khaki boat, campaign. A, the khaki campaign, exactly. And there again, he was able to have a crack at Anthony Albanese over Labor and China. After days on a razor's edge, Ukraine is now a nation at war. Russia's military invasion of Ukraine is underway. There is no purgatory for war criminals. They go straight to hell. Circumstances require firm and immediate action from us. Multiple attacks on cities right across the country. We heard the sound of explosions here in Kiev. This has all happened under the cover of darkness in Ukraine. If they weren't awake already, they are now because we've heard more explosions. The citizens who long prayed for peace now had to face war. Lines of cars head for Poland, Romania and Moldova. Train stations are swamped. <laughs> 
listen to calls from their president to take up arms. We are fighting for our life, we are fighting for our freedom. Russian fighter jets are spearheading the assault with airstrikes in border regions. The country is being attacked from all directions. Russia should step back. It should unconditionally withdraw. Putin is the aggressor. Putin chose this war, and now he and his country will bear the consequences. Well, Phil, what to say? The last week has just been cataclysmic on so many fronts. What sort of impact does this event have on the world as, as we knew it? It's a horrible thing to watch, isn't it? It's a terrible thing to sit back and watch uh, with, with impotence, in, in effect, from Australia and, and see men, women, children, uh, soldiers on both sides being slaughtered. And for what? Mm. Because of the, the desire of one man to dominate this country. And that was the bet that everyone seemed to be making. Not everyone, but most analysts. There's no way he'd do it. It's inconceivable. The risks are too great. What, the yeah, what's, are too what's in it what's for him? The, what's the rationale? Well, a broader question maybe is, uh, OK, so he sees this as his defining moment in history, trying to reunify at least elements or parts of the old Soviet Union. But it's also quite possibly the beginning of the end for him, because it's difficult to see in the long term how he wins. And a long-running insurgency, I mean, which is one very plausible outcome here, that saps Russia of money, uh, it saps the morale of troops, Russia is increasingly isolated. He's actually achieved <laughs> exactly the opposite to what he wanted. He wanted a fractured Europe. He wanted a weakened Europe. And actually, he's got a much strengthened Europe. However, there's no offer uh, from the West, from Joe Biden's speech, of troops on the ground. And why? Well. Uh, the risk is that escalates and becomes uh, a nuclear war. I mean, it, it, the unimaginable is suddenly imaginable. What happens when you see day in, day out, these pictures of horror, uh, these innocent people being slaughtered? The political pressure on all the leaders uh, in the United States, in Western Europe, but also places like Australia is just going to grow and grow. I'm telling him from the bottom of my heart, President Putin, in the name of humanity, bring your troops back to Russia. This conflict must stop now. We've been slowly walking towards a likely invasion of Ukraine by Russia. At a brutal political level, it meant that Scott Morrison could spend a lot of his time as a statesman talking about national security, joining up with the Western allies to put pressure on Vladimir Putin. Look, I think that national security as a broad rule benefits the incumbent. It certainly is something that Scott Morrison likes as a subject. He likes that political turf. This one might favour him. It certainly allows him to talk about every other issue. But there's also a problem for Labor. Anthony Albanese was talking about using the last few weeks of, of this term um, to better identify himself and Labor's platform. He said that the, the breeze was, was behind kicking his back. Wind. He was kicking with the wind. Well, suddenly we have this blustery cold wind from Eastern Europe. It is going to create a lot of turbulence, both in international politics and domestic politics. And we still don't know how this will affect the election when it comes when it comes before it. With a budget looming, Scott Morrison got the reset that he wanted and ability to talk about the economy while also talking about national security because of what was happening in Russia. But because things are so unpredictable, with northern New South Wales and Queensland suddenly inundated and underwater. Another it, extreme weather event. It brings all the horror memories back for Scott Morrison and that trip to Hawaii as the East Coast burned back in late 2019. It meant he's again on an issue that could be fraught with danger for him. He might not have held a hose during the bushfire emergency of 2020, but he'll want to make sure that he's holding a mop this time. There has been a series of extreme weather and flooding events which are continuing and will still continue for many days to come. I think people should brace themselves. Well, let's go to Canberra now for the news that broke overnight. The Prime Minister has tested positive for COVID.